Ah, the Renaissance, the transition between the Middle Ages and the modern age. It was the time of amazing thinkers like Leonardo da Vinci, where we created new art, science, technology, and philosophy. But did the amazing thinkers of the Renaissance figure out anything new about the brain? In the 1500s, Andreas Vesalius did work on human cadavers, and he discovered problems with the previously accepted Galenic view of anatomy. Remember Galen, the guy who thought that animal spirits fly through our ventricles? What could he have been wrong about? Andreas Vesalius noticed many structural characteristics during his dissections of the brain and the nervous system that were previously undocumented. He discovered parts of the brain like the putamen and the corpus callosum. Vesalius held the belief that the brain was made up of seven pairs of what he called brain nerves. Each of these brain nerves was specialized in his opinion and had its own specific duties. In the 1600s, René Descartes was another Renaissance thinker studying the brain. Descartes was a French philosopher, mathematician, and scientist who did most of his work in the Dutch Republic. He looked at the brain's physiology and he proposed his own theory of how the mind interacts with the body. His theory was called dualism, and a lot of flavors of dualism actually still exist today in the world of philosophy. Descartes believed that the mind or the soul interacted with a person's body through the pineal gland in the brain. Think of it kind of like having a remote-controlled car. He thought that somewhere the soul was sending signals to the pineal gland, which then controlled the rest of the body. This isn't a theory that we really use in neuroscience at all, but a lot of people who believe in souls still take dualist positions today. Descartes may be more famous as a philosopher than as a neuroscientist, but he actually discovered some things about how cerebral spinal fluid circulates through the brain. Good job, René. Another brain researcher working in the 1600s was Jan Swammerdam. He was a Dutch biologist and microscopist who was the first to see and describe red blood cells. Nice job, Jan. Swammerdam is famous in neuroscience because he placed a frog's thigh muscle inside of a small syringe filled with some water. When he irritated the nerve of the muscle, the water level actually decreased a bit. Doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but it was, because at the time, the major theory of how muscles worked was the balloonist theory. In the balloonist theory, muscles were thought to work by inflating with gas or liquid. Swammerdam actually proved that this was wrong, and he showed that muscles contract when stimulated. This led to a breakthrough in early neuroscience where people realized behavior is based on stimuli. The last person that we'll discuss is Thomas Willis, an English doctor that worked in the 1600s as well. He was a founding member of the Royal Society, and he studied psychiatry, neurology, and anatomy as well. Willis created neurological treatments and was one of the first to describe in detail the cerebral hemispheres, the brainstem, the cerebellum, and the ventricles. Named after him is the Circle of Willis, or a circle of arteries that sits at the base of the brain. Willis discovered a lot and he contributed to science, but some of his discoveries weren't always great. One of his treatments involved just kind of hitting someone in the head with a stick really hard, so... Yeah? <sighs> Are you feeling down? Depressed? Well, not anymore. Try Stichetra. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's it for neuroscience in the Renaissance, but in the next video, we'll be talking about neuroscience in the modern period. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please leave a like and subscribe to see future videos from the channel. Take care of your brains, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, guys.